There is a place so ancient in its glory, so magnificent in its splendor, so timeless in its colors. You feel the fire lurking just beneath the surface as the cool, crisp air flows over the canyon rocks. As we go about our everyday tasks, the earth upon which we stand breathes and exhales in a timeless manner, mocking our insignificance upon it. The waters come from a place deep below, not above. The steam whispers tales of ancient secrets that dissipate into thin air. The buffalo amble across golden meadows with their huge heads swaying back and forth. They appear as though they know things that we could never comprehend and wouldn't tell us if we could. If we were to glimpse into the soul of this place and have it whisper back its secrets in the vestiges of the rising smoke, it would be too ancient and too beautiful for us to grasp. Cheryl Arnold, original writing, Yellowstone. Good morning, we're Good the morning. Grand Fort Bandits. Grand I'm, Fort Bandits here. I'm Cheryl. I'm Jeff, or Mr. Dimple. And guess what? This is the fun side of RV transport. Yellowstone edition. Um, we dropped off in Salmon Arm, and now we get to play. So that's the this fun is, side. This will be a great video. In this video, you're going to see mountain lions. You're going to see <laughs> grizzly bears killing and eating elk. Um, you you're will gonna see elk. You're going to see buffalo trampling tourists. You may even see a amazing. buffalo ripping the pants off of a tourist. It's going to be amazing. Um, I'll try to get that on film for you. Anyway, thanks for joining us on yeah. the Yellowstone Adventure. We're going to have fun. We are going to have a blast today because it is awesome here in Yellowstone. If you've ever been to Yellowstone, you know how awesome this place is. And if you have not been to Yellowstone, come with us. We'll show you everything. And then you can come and see Absolutely. Because it's fantastic. And when you get into RV transport, when you drop that trailer near here, you know, meander back to go to get your other trailer. Yeah. Come through Yellowstone. Come through Yellowstone. It'll be a great video, all right? Cheryl's going to ride a buffalo. Come on, let's go. Okay, so we arrived in Gardner late last night, and we it was only five miles from Gardner. Um, to Mammoth Hot Springs. Uh, so we got some great footage of Mammoth Hot Springs. Take a look at this from last night. Okay, this is the north entrance of Yellowstone. This is the iconic um, Theodore Roosevelt entrance. This is the Mammoth Hot Springs area. Uh, sorry for the windshield situation, but as you can see, there are elk right here. Yep, there comes one going across the road. Okay, this is the Terrace Grill here at Mammoth Hot Springs area of Yellowstone, and it smells delicious, so we may pop in there and get some stuff. This area is populated with the elk. This is almost a guaranteed spot. This area of Yellowstone to um, see the elk. So if you want to see elk up close, come to Mammoth Hot Springs area of Yellowstone. Um, and essentially, a bull's main prerogative this time of year during the rut or mating season is to mate with as many of them as you can. So that's why you'll see a lot of the time they're really trying to corral all of the cows they can into one spot area. Um, and then all the cows eventually will go into estrus twice a season. First time, if it, they don't get a try, you have to move 24 hours, they'll do it again. Um, but that's why he keeps them so close. Because everyone's about to move back. Well, is he bugling them to impress Yeah, they kind of are. So one happens, and then there's a couple of weeks between them and then they're done. Does he make that bugle noise to impress the girls? A little bit of that. Um, he definitely uses it a lot when he's trying to kind of prowl them. And it also is uh, serving a purpose kind of to tell other bulls, hey, stay away. Like, this is my area, these are my cows. Um, so if you listen to him do it and listen really hard, the bull that's way over there, you're calling back and forth. Okay, 
Okay, here's the Terrace Grill, the general store, and if you can see right up here, just beyond Jeff and that bus, is the uh, hot springs that I'm going to take you to next. The Mammoth Hot Springs, right there. All right, we're going to take you up to Mammoth Hot Springs. Here we are at Mammoth Hot Springs. I don't know why they call it Mammoth. Maybe they found Mammoth here. No, or it's because it's so big. It's so big. Or maybe there's currently Mammoth here. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> well, I'm going to make you walk to some more of it. So uh, it's, this is just the little bit of it that you can see right here in this part. I don't think you will make it. <laughs> I don't have my emergency Okay, we parked way down there. We made it all the way up here. I did. Charles said it was going to be a stroll, but way more than a stroll. It was a little bit of a climb. Way more than a stroll. So I'm done strolling. <laughs> Alright, let's head back down to the car. Mr. Bone sees an elk right there. That's beautiful right there. That is beautiful.
that this is coming into the town of Gardner. This is the north entrance to the Yellowstone Park. And this is the neato town of Gardner. Okay, the elk are going to church. Right here in the town of Gardner. just seen. Yeah, I told you they were delicious. I've got my access pass. Because Jeff is a veteran, he has a lifelong National Parks Access card that we get to use that gets us into all national parks free of charge. Otherwise, I think it's $35 a vehicle, right? And that's good for like seven days. Yellowstone is massive, okay? It takes you at least all day to do um, a loop road. And if you stop and walk around and see any of the attractions, um, then that takes you more than a day. You need, you need two or three days to just traverse and see the things in Yellowstone. Um, we've been here many, many times, um, but this is the first time that I'm going to take you guys here, and uh, we will try and get as much of Yellowstone in as possible in the um, one day that we have available while we reset. Okay, we're here at Undyne Falls. This is the first stop out of uh, Mammoth Hot Springs. Okay, because the morning is getting late and uh, Tower uh, to Canyon Road is closed and um, Lamar Valley is such a long way out this road um, we are going to head back towards Mammoth so that we can get more footage of better stuff. Alright we have our first buffalo sighting here on uh, the, just a few miles outside of Mammoth Hot Springs. Okay, what you see here is the beginning of Mammoth Hot Springs. You'll see all that white there. Those are travertine terraces. They're found at the Mammoth Hot Springs and it's where the interactions of hot water and limestone uh, deep underneath the ground create like a chalk white travertine terrace on the surface of the ground. And uh, the experts say that only about 10% of Mammoth Hot Springs water is actually on the surface. It's all underneath there. Um, so you've seen that in the video of last night where I was showing the, the steam coming off. You can see a little bit of steam coming off right there. And we'll take another little bit of a look as we drive by. Now Mammoth Hot Springs can see here um, you know the whole place is shaped by the volume of water so the slope of the ground and the objects in the water's path as you know uh, water takes the uh, the least path of resistance you can hike all the way around through here 
Um, the features are constantly changing. So some are dried up and some take new paths. Some vents clog up completely and new vents form. Uh, old vents sometimes reopen. And uh, the water is concentrated in few springs at other times it spreads out on a lot of different uh, outlets and inlets. But there's, this is the hiking section for uh, Mammoth Hot Springs. And uh, the scientists estimate at any given time only about 10% of the water at Mammoth Hot Springs is on the surface. You know, Charles Allen stuff is hard. Is that she? She's reading that right out of the pamphlet. <laughs> She's using words. She uses words. He's right here. No, look, look. <laughs> She's using words I've never heard come out of her mouth, all right? Uh, like travertine terraces are made of water and limestone. Yeah. yeah. And the erosion effect. Things I can't even say. Yeah. Anyway, it sounds good, don't it? <laughs> yeah. I get your information that way. We are on Upper Terrace Drive. We come to the upper side of Mammoth Hot Springs. We're still on Upper Terrace Drive, which is a nice little one-way. Uh, here are the Upper Terraces of Mammoth Hot Springs. She's gonna blow. You'll notice that a lot of the trees are um, like dying or twisted. Um, that comes from the excessive limestone minerals in the in the ground. We've left the area of the Mammoth Hot Springs and now we're headed towards Norris on this beautiful little road. This is a little one-way road right off of that road we were just on called the Golden Gate. I'm thinking there's probably a gate made of gold out here. <laughs> Somehow I don't think so. But wouldn't that be nice? But then you do get to run through these cool rocks here. the Golden Gate. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> There's no gate here made of gold. What's up with that? This uh, bridges the Golden Gate Canyon and it was one of the most difficult and expensive challenges engineers faced when building the first roads through the park. The first bridge was built in 1885. Take a look at this. 1,275 pounds of explosives were needed to remove 14,000 cubic yards of solid rock, which was hauled off in dump trucks of the day, which were horse and wagons. Now that was built in 1885, that first wooden bridge. The bridge was dangerously unstable by 1900. Heavily laden stage coasters crossed the bridge many times a day with the possibility of a fatal drop into the chasm of the wooden trestle. The bridge was rebuilt in 1900, 1933, and 1977 using newer materials and engineering each time. Let's take a look at this canyon. Got a little snow right there. Much of the scenery on the roads through Yellowstone is of, you know, long stretches of trees where there could be wildlife, so we keep our eyes peeled. And the reason it takes so long to go across Yellowstone is because the speed limit um, is only about 45. 
to 35 miles per hour most of the way. You can see this is called a fumarole, and I'm going to tell you what the difference between a geyser, a fumarole, a mud pot, and all that stuff is here shortly. And uh, this is completely barren. This is called Roaring Mountain, and uh, it's completely inhospitable to humans because of Sulfurobus acicaldarius organisms live inside fumaroles and underneath this mountain and when they come out they erode the mountain so they're extremely toxic so really nothing even um, little animals or trees or anything can live on this. Okay, we are coming into the Norris section. We are going to turn left here and go towards Canyon Village. We are on Virginia Cascade, little off-road from the main road. It's a one-way road. And uh, we're going to see what we can see on this little one-lane road. Yeah, that's not a good sign. Yeah. The There's the Virginia Cascades. Let's go take a look at them. Don't fall off this mountain. It's a long way down. It looks like we got a bit of snow on the road, side of the road there last night. Now, you can get snow in Yellowstone any time of the year. We've been here before when we went camping in Yellowstone on my birthday. It was June 18th, and we woke up in the morning, and it was still dark outside, inside our tent. So we went back to sleep, and then we woke up again. It was still dark, went back to sleep. We woke up, like, really later, and we said, why is it so dark outside for so long? And when we unzipped our tent, it was covered in about six inches of snow at Canyon Village Campground. And it, all the snow fell inside the tent and everything. So of all the places in the Western United States, I have to say that Yellowstone is probably the coldest area. You would think it to be the hottest area since there's so many geysers and fumaroles and it's sitting right on top of a volcano. Well, right now it's um, September and um, it's 58 degrees outside. It's sunny, so it's warm. You really don't even need a jacket to be outside during the day when it's warm, but at night it gets down to in the 30s. So make sure you bring, if you're gonna be here overnight, make sure you bring some warm clothing because it can get cold and it can snow at any time in Yellowstone. We're here now at Canyon Village. Well, let's go check this out. This is a great place to come if you want the souvenirs, get something to eat. They've got a lodge here and a campground and all your services right here at Canyon Village. All right, here's your visitor information center. Um, also, they got bear spray rentals right there. If you wanna go hiking, cause you don't go hiking here without bear spray, is that correct? You can get any of your questions answered there at the visitor center. You can get your groceries and souvenirs. Um, they got a general store here and a, a grill. So this is a great place to stop. Okay, and one other reminder, when you go into any of the public spaces here in uh, Yellowstone, you have to wear a mask. Any federal place now, you have to wear a mask. Yep, got your mask. So you have to mask up or you can't go in.
with Billy the Buffalo. You can safely get next to a buffalo here without losing your pants. I want you to look at the size of this raven. It's crazy big. Hey, dude. Okay, we're gonna catch us a little bit of lunch. We just bought us a cold cut sub and some potatoes. Cost us about $120. No, <laughs> no, not really. Uh, it's just a little more expensive here, of course, because you're in a national park. And uh, we're gonna try not to let um, that dude right up there um, come and get any of that. Okay, this is the visitor center. the crater of the super volcano that is Yellowstone. Okay, so you just seen where we were in, we are in the caldera that is Yellowstone. The Yellowstone caldera is crazy big. It's the largest volcano in the world and it is erupted for a long time but it can blow at any moment so we're going to take our chances today and hope that it doesn't but i'm going to take you now we turned left out of canyon village the first stop is going to be the grand canyon of the yellowstone all right we're going to go up this trail and look at the lower falls of the grand canyon of the yellowstone pretty awesome so far without any falls We're up here at Lookout Point, and this is the view of the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. The Yellowstone River plunges 308 feet. All right, here we are in Yellowstone. We're in Yellowstone. It's the perfect opportunity to try out my new app. I've got a new app that tells me how to make my wife love me more. It does? Yes. You have an app for that? I have an app for that. All men need an app for that. All right, one of the things on the app was hug her from behind. I'm good at that. Right? Focus from behind. Okay. Another one is watch a movie with her and not expect anything to happen. That's hard, but I did it. Make her laugh. That's she does easy. make me laugh. That's easy. She laughs at me all the time. It's funny living with him. <laughs> it's right. just naturally but funny. But now this last, this other one I had to do, it's a tough one. Mm -hmm. what was it? Take her on a hike. So I'm, I'm taking her on two now. Um, yeah, that should be like double love. Like a 50, 50 Hey, it was a hike. <laughs> and yesterday was a big one. Yes, yesterday I was a little bit more than he could bear. So we'll see how that app works out. And uh, I'll let you know. I'll give you a review of it. Okay, a review of the app. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I may take him on some more. I may take him on some more hikes today. Hikes. Yeah. See you guys. Okay, let's head down through Hayden Valley. That's where you want to be to see the animules. Um, it is the middle of the day, so um, catching uh, the bison or elk or whatever animals you might find, oh, sorry, that was a drink of um, is more prevalent in the early morning and late evening, but we'll see what we can do.
we are entering Hayden Valley, a vast valley and an animal haven. We have seen wolves out here before in the late evening um, several years ago. Okay, we have some buffalo or bison right here. been working my magic on Cheryl. Another one of the things was take her to a park. And now look where we're at. Yellowstone National Park, the greatest park in the world. This can't fail. Now, there's one thing left for me to do on the love list. It's very difficult. I've got to find some kittens and be nice to them. After this event, Cheryl will go into the love trend and she will be extremely nice to me. And without even realizing it, she will begin making my life a paradise. That's right. Just wait. We're going to turn into the mud volcanoes area here in Hayden Valley. I'm going to explain to you what the difference between a, a fumarole is a steam vent. You saw that earlier. It's the hottest hydrothermal feature in the park. And uh, the temperatures on a fumarole is well above boiling water. Um, geysers, which we'll see later, erupt with steaming hot water. Okay, and uh, hot springs are the most common hydrothermal feature. And they vary from frothing, mocha-like boiling water to clear, calm pools. Now these are the mud pots. They're acidic features with limited water supply. Their consistency and activity vary with the seasons. And then we have the travertine terraces that you've seen up at Mammoth Hot Springs. So we're going to go look at the um, mud pots. spring. Obviously a dragon in there. <laughs> All right, so there's one more thing on my list that I forgot to mention because I try to forget about it. Because it's the most difficult thing on my list to do. I don't know if my life will ever be a paradise. That is, pay attention to what she says. That's right, fellas. You heard me means I've got to listen to what she says and remember it. I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> Alright, so here you can see the mud boiling. The 
Thumbs up some mud. I don't know what it is. It's got this strong aroma to it, doesn't it, sir? Yeah. Like uh, rotten, rotten eggs. eggs. <laughs> rotten eggs. That's the best way to describe it. That's the sulfur that you smell. And uh, you know, I'm I'm pretty used to uh, strong smells. Guys, I did it. I remembered something Cheryl said. Earlier today, she was rattling off about something about the park. I don't know what it was. But she asked me about it later and I remembered it. I don't know what it was now, but... He <laughs> so doesn't remember. At the time of her asking me, I remembered. Okay. So, I'm golden. This is Fishing Bridge, crossing over the Yellowstone River. Okay, so I just saw Jeff petting a little kitten, and I immediately, my heart just swelled, and I became swooned, and I just became enamored with everything that he was about when he petted the little kitten. And I love him so much. These are sulfur cauldrons. Boy, it smells like it too. in Hayden Valley headed back the other direction and we have bison uh, right here on the road right there in front of Mr. Bones and over here and this is why we don't ride our motorcycles through Yellowstone that very reason right there, you could get caught in one of these traffic jams, the bison cross the road, and if he swings that big head this way, you can forget about it. headed down this little trail again walking not hiking um, down yeah, to the this is a pretty long trail <laughs> it feels like hiking <laughs> and uh, we are going to take you to the Norris Geyser Basin it is the largest geothermal area so this will be the fourth hike walk was lifted in miles so <laughs> it's not miles I feel like it's like right here I feel like it's a hike it's not a hike 
you. It's a little walk. It was listed in terms of miles. <laughs> like 0.25. Take a look at this. This is Steamboat Geyser. Right. This is the Encyclopedia of Yellowstone Knowledge. All to the Steamboat Geyser area. Right. Uh, it erupts quite often, but um, <coughs> it's non-predictable, so it's not like Old Faithful, so nobody knows exactly when it's going to erupt. Maybe we'll get lucky. What are you doing? This cone says National Park Service trails on it. A trail is a hike. <laughs> I'm sure. You can no longer deny it. this is a hike. Caution. I see trail. Right? You take a small walk on a path. You hike a trail. Now, this is Sunday Geyser. It erupts on Sunday. This is Crackling Lake. Can you hear that? We're going to head south to Madison Junction and then on down towards Old Faithful. We're here at Gibbon Falls. Firehole Falls Canyon Road. Finale of Old Faithful, but this it's gonna is going to be great. Uh, if you'll note, to use that word hike again. No. <laughs> yeah, but we're going to go up here and take a look at this, and uh, hopefully this is just going to be a romantic story. Yeah, I think so.
is the Grand Prismatic Spring. Um, if you could get close to it or see it from above, it's bright blue. I'll try to get a photograph of that in the gift shop if that's still open. But it is gorgeous at this time of day. As you can see, there has been a buffalo up here. It erupts approximately every 90 minutes, so um, we've got until about 8 o'clock, so it might be a little dark when we get the eruption on film. If not, if I don't get it tonight, I'm going to get it in the morning, and uh, you will definitely see it for sure. And we've got time to eat us a bite to eat at the cafeteria, and go in the gift shop. Right here. And Old Faithful, the actual geyser, is located right out those windows. I told you I'd show you what Grand Prismatic Spring looks like. There's the walkway we were on, and that's what it looks like from above. That's Old Faithful as she looks right now. Okay, so last night we got here, and um, it was due to erupt at about 10 minutes till 8 but since Old Faithful is not as faithful as um, they claim it to be, they said give it plus about, or minus 10 minutes. Yeah, it was about 8.15. Um, it was got to be about 8.15 and it was way too dark. Here's some of the footage that I got from last night, but you can't really see it too good with the, uh, with the phone camera. It was cool watching the golf at cool night. It was cool at night though to see it in person. And so we waited around and camped um, in the truck yeah. here at Yellowstone at Old Faithful. and. Um, got up this morning to see it erupt, so here it is. So if you like the video of Yellowstone, don't forget to press that like button. And uh, if you are not subscribed to our channel, subscribe. <laughs> and um, we are going to head down the road towards the Grand Tetons and um, hopefully get some more footage there. Let's see what we can see.
lake. In fact, when we were here on our motorcycle just two months ago with our friend Matt, we stopped here and that was all water. It has really gone down since then. Alright, we are going to make a right turn at Moran Junction and uh, go deeper into the Teton. You know, here we are going through the Grand Teton. It's gorgeous. Mr. Bones is fast asleep. He is dead asleep. liked our Yellowstone video, please hit that like button. Hit that like button. Comment and subscribe. Transport Bandits out. out. <laughs>